Hawkeyes get the big win we've been looking for against Northwestern, but maybe more importantly, the quarterback change we've been looking for. We break it down today, Locked on Hawkeyes. You are Locked on Hawkeyes, your daily podcast on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome in. I'm Trent Condon, and this is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We're available wherever you find podcasts. You can also watch us on YouTube. While you're there, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Helps us get in front of more Hawkeye fans. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if your team if you win your first $5 bet, visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right, let's kick it off today. Iowa with the big win over Northwestern. 40-14 is the final. The defense pitches a shutout. There's a punt return late in the football game. There was a pick six early in the football game. In between, though, that defense was outstanding and a huge bounce back effort after the game against Michigan State. Look, this Northwestern team is not very good offensively. In fact, it's fair to say they're bad. But Iowa went out there. I'm going to anticipate it was not a very fun week of practice for this Iowa football team, uh, certainly for the defensive side of the football. Phil Parker, he's a yeller. He was getting after the guys. He was doing those kind of things and, and certainly made it so what well, we saw the Iowa defense that we're used to. And they were physical. They were making plays early in the game. Northwestern hit on a couple of plays, but overall uh, that defense was up to snuff. We saw some physicality. We saw guys finishing plays and didn't have the missed tackles like we saw a week ago. And that was certainly the big bugaboo in that one. The defense not being able to get off the field at all uh, throughout the course of the game. But of course, the big conversation is about quarterback. And we're going to uh, kick things into gear right there. Brendan Sullivan comes into the game after Cade McNamara exits. Had the pick six. That was the last throw that we saw from him. And throughout the television broadcast, there was a lot of talk about a uh, possibility of a concussion. He didn't have his helmet. That's usually a pretty good precursor uh, to what it was. Now, a lot of people were speculating that the concussion maybe was sustained on the play when he threw one of the worst passes you're going to see. And no, that wasn't the pick six, though that was bad in its own right. The previous drive where McNamara was leveled on a throw, but even before that, the throw was just absolutely terrible, fluttered in the air. It was a wounded duck. And that might be a knock on wounded ducks. Uh, that thing was just absolutely hideous, picked off. But Iowa kept the football because of a personal foul uh, on that on the hit of McNamara, which wasn't helmet to helmet. Defensive player landed on him, and that's what led to the 15-yard penalty. Iowa maintained the ball and uh, moved down the field from there. McNamara hit a couple of plays, had Seth Anderson up the middle of the field, a deep pass play, something that's been a rarity, nearly overthrew it, but Anderson, a beautiful job of laying out. And Seth Anderson, the reason that we continue to talk about him is he has been just so banged up through his year and a half now of his Iowa football career is because he adds a different element to this offense. And he is incredibly important for this team. I'm just having a guy that can go down the field. And that's not Jacob Gill. That's not Reese Vanderzee, who was also lost in the game with an injury. That is not really this team, the way that they're built. Jarrett Bowie. Uh, even a guy like Dayton Howard that's been out there rotationally. And if they're not using Caden Weijin in a wide receiver role and they didn't on Saturday, well, frankly, they just don't have much speed out there. Well, Seth Anderson has that. He has the wheels. And McNamara missed him later in the end zone, had him open on a corner route. He was there and just overthrew it too far off the sideline and led to an incompletion. Anderson nearly got that one as well. But you saw McNamara, even before the apparent injury, that he just wasn't right. And even the passes that he was completing, he was missing guys. And this has been a problem with Cade McNamara. And it's something that I think we've continued to see from him is the makeable plays, just the inability to make those plays. Is there any doubt that he is probably a more reliable passer than Brandon Sullivan? I think so. I think certainly in practice, what you continue to hear is just that. Like Brandon Sullivan is not a great thrower of the football. It is not his strength. His strength is certainly his legs and his athleticism and, and the size speed component that he has and this element that he adds to the offense. But when Brendan Sullivan came in, I mean, you heard it. You heard the pop. You heard the juice in the fan base. It's something that we've all been clamoring for, that we've all been hoping for. And 
though I've long maintained that Brent Sullivan is not a great elixir, that he is not a guy that is going to cure the passing woes of this team, and they're suddenly going to be throwing for you know 250 yards a game. That's not who he is. But the reason I think so many people wanted to see him is because of what he can do in the ground game. And after the game, Caleb Johnson said just that. You know, him adding an extra element, adding that extra player out there that defenses have to account for in the running game is going to make Caleb Johnson's job that much easier. Now, is Iowa going forward if they go with Brendan Sullivan? Is this something that they're going to have to do? Are they going to have to curate the offense and change kind of the nuts and bolts of what they want to do? I don't think there's any doubt about that, but that's okay. Look, that's why you make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, right? To coordinate an offense. Yes, you can do that. You don't have to just continue to pound a round peg into a square hole. Though I was trying to do that for years and years and years. You don't have to. You're allowed to evolve. You're allowed to adapt. And I think Tim Lester will be able to do that with Brendan Sullivan as the starter. Now the question becomes, will he be the starter? Will this be an injury? Kid McNamara, whenever he's healthy, if he is back, if the if it true turns out to be a concussion and that's what it is, we'll find out on Tuesday. And we'll get more information, I'm sure, from Kirk Ferentz about this situation the way it is. Because do you have any great hope that it's just going to be, all right, we're moving on? I don't. We have too much ammunition. We've seen too many years of this where the unwillingness of Kirk Ferentz to make this change at quarterback, it becomes incredibly difficult. And you hope that it has nothing to do with NIL. You hope that it has nothing to do with things that are intangible, things that you can't quantify, uh, the leadership skills that he has. Come on. You saw this team. They rallied around Brendan Sullivan. And even after Brendan Sullivan had three consecutive three and outs, his first three drives when he came into the game were great. They stuck with him and eventually popped. Of course, the biggest play of the game, and I think the one that most people will remember most, yeah, Weijin's punt return, that was a fun one. There were other plays during the course of the game. Three touchdown runs from Caleb Johnson, all three of them, were his longest runs of the day, but it's going to be a little swing pass out to the tight end and to Brendan Sullivan running up the field, getting in front of the play, being the lead blocker on that play. That one definitely juiced up the crowd. I'm sure juiced up all the Hawkeye fans watching on TV. That was one you absolutely are. All right, this guy's different, and this guy can help this Iowa football team. Will it change? Let's talk about that a little bit more. Plus, we got to give some flowers to some of the players on the defensive side of the football. A good one. Iowa gets the win. The quarterback conversation will continue with that as well. We roll through. This is Locked on Hawkeyes. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers, you can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL. All day. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats. Do you live play-by-play? and so much more on the same page where you make your bets. Get that information in front of you. Know exactly where your eyeballs matching up with what the box score says. says you can do that right there on the FanDuel app. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You can get started with the NFL and, of course, college football. The Hawkeyes, currently a three-and-a-half-point favorite against Wisconsin. They got you covered there. Maybe you're looking at Monday Night Football. The Steelers, a six-point favorite tonight against the Giants. They got you covered with that. World Series Game 3. NBA, NHL, you name it, they have it on the FanDuel app. Once again, you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet with FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel.com. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Trent kind of back with you once again on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We roll through here and take a look back at the win against Northwestern. It was a thing of beauty. A lot of positives to go around. i got to mention a little bit more about the defense and what we saw from them. Caleb Johnson mentioned his three runs. Brendan Sullivan coming in. We'll get a little bit more into the quarterback. Uh, some walking wounded. Something to keep an eye on. See Reese Vanderzee. He left the game. Uh, Chad Leistikow reported after the game, uh, though he didn't report it, what he is hearing. That is the correct terminology. That a hairline fracture in the foot. 
Looks to be a pretty substantial injury. He had a walking boot on. Luke Lachey, he exited the game for a long time. I didn't see him out there. So they're walking wounded. You know, Addison Estrang already out at the tight end position. You throw a banged up Lachey on top of it. Uh, things get a little bit scary with Wisconsin coming to town next weekend. But let's talk about the defense and what we saw on that, that side of the football. Jay Higgins finishes the game with eight tackles. Felt like he had 18. Uh, had the interception off the deflection. And it was probably one of my favorite parts of the game is him and Nick Jackson. Nick Jackson applied the pressure. Nick Jackson comes up there. Ball's deflected around. It's kind of hanging there. Jay Higgins just grabs it. Just a great play for an all-timer. Jay Higgins is going to be beloved for a long time. You know, he's going to get a big pop the first time he comes back and is an honorary captain and does those things because, yeah, his dad is a character, right? And I think that's a component to it, too. Hawk, 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 hawk on the on the messages on, on Twitter and like. But I'll tell you, this guy who early in his career, he's playing special teams, playing late in blowouts, and all right, he's fine. Oh boy, he has turned out to be so much more than that. Really, the heartbeat of this football team is Jay Higgins. I love that. But after he gets the interception, after he gets tackled, he tosses the ball to Jackson, basically saying, thank you for getting the pressure there. And they're tossing it back and forth. Just, just dude's having a good time. Absolutely love that part of it. and love the way that this defense played overall on Saturday. Six tackles in the game for Nick Jackson. Boy, getting Sebastian Castro out there again. You can see how important he is to this Iowa defense in the cash position. No John Nestor this week. Uh, they went a lot more. This week with Deshaun Lee, he finished the game with four uh, tackles in the game. Quinn Schulte got an interception. Great to see. Keep his hands on that one. Mentioned the Higgins uh, one as well. Overall, seven tackles for a loss in the game. Just two sacks. One came from Max Llewellyn. Boy, that kid knows how to get to the quarterback. And then late in the game, we also saw uh, Nick Jackson and Kenneth Merriweather uh, teaming up there. How about Merriweather getting in the game? Rotational young guy, redshirt freshman. We've heard a little bit about him, but He's buried down the depth chart of ways. Good to see, though, one of those young guys see a little bit of success uh, in the football game. I love what we continue to see from Xavier Wampa. He's playing as physical a brand of football that we've seen in his Iowa football career. And maybe it took a little bit longer than we hoped, but the light bulb was coming on. And speaking of guys we got to talk about, Reese Dakin. Look, I I've been tough on him. I really have. And I knew expectations were likely going to be high for him. I had high expectations for him. There are games, there's been there's been poor punts this year. And we're still talking about a freshman. That was the caveat that I also put in. Now, Tory Taylor was an old guy when he showed up on campus. Not the case here. Reese Dakin is a normal age for a freshman. And Tory Taylor got to go through his first season playing American football. He got to do it with nobody in the stands. Different here with what Dakin's going through. And, and just the feel, I'm sure, of what it feels like uh, going through things. Uh, but that aside, pinning the opponents, seeing... The lob wedge come out, little backspin one time, hitting it high, giving the coverage unit an opportunity to get down the football field. I thought the coverage unit was much better on top of it. Uh, that definitely helped. And yes, late in the game, they gave up that punt return to some walk-on. And oh boy, uh, that'll give something for LeVar Woods to obviously go through with the tape with the guys this week. But that aside, great job out of Dakin. He was outstanding. Uh, four punts inside the 20-yard line, three of them inside the 10. And, and as Iowa was still trying to find their footing, in the early portions of that football game, he was so important to what they do and what they were doing at that point in time and, and definitely got to give a uh, tip of the ball cap to him. So this is a team now going forward that's going to have to look a lot different. And they're going to look different if it is. Cade McNamara out, Brendan Sullivan in. So two different ways to look at it. And how much you're going to rely on this being a run-based offense, what, you, what it is, and what you're going to do in the passing game with Brendan Sullivan. Look, they've kept things very simple for him as a thrower. A lot of sideline throws, a lot of quick plays, getting the ball out quickly. That's been really what we've seen the most from Brendan Sullivan. We haven't seen him air it out. And you go back and you watch some of the film from him at Northwestern, you saw a guy that would make plays down the field. Now, one thing I think that, Coach Ferentz and company are working to maybe coach out of him a little bit as he took a lot of chances. When he was at Northward, he, Northwestern, he was a guy that would make throws that always weren't there. A lot of times it wasn't making the read, just making anticipation that a guy's going to be there without actually making the read of the defense. And, and that's when he would get in the most trouble. It's going to be fun, though. I, I think this is something that 
at this team and what's in front of them. Iowa favored by more than a field goal. Um, I believe personally, my numbers have them more like a five and a half point favorite in the game against Wisconsin. But that aside, point spreads aside, a very winnable football game against a Wisconsin team with Braden Locke that turns it over. A team that certainly is not built like they were in the past with that big nose tackle and the 3 4 and these fast athletic linebackers slashing in and cutting things down. They're back to the traditional 4 3. And with it, maybe they're just not as scary defensively as they've been in the past, at least the way that they match up against Iowa historically. The running game's got going a little bit here lately, but I like Iowa's chances. I really do. After that, it's a short trip, uh, short week, and the long trip to UCLA. UCLA is getting better, but still, Iowa's going to be a substantial favorite in that football game. Then you get a long bye week, a bonus bye on top of it with the extra day, 15 days before you face off against a Maryland team that is just absolutely depleted. Uh, they got blown off the field by Minnesota after their miraculous Maryland's comeback win against USC the week previous. I mean, you could you could see that for a letdown spot a mile away, and that one definitely played out. And then, of course, Nebraska. And if you watch Nebraska against Ohio State, you say, oh, you see him against Indiana, you say, yeah. I, I don't know if those are real words or not. But uh, that aside. So that's what's in front of Iowa. But it starts this week. And we'll see if Sullivan's going to be the guy again. Tuesday, the press conference, I think we're going to get more information. Did Cade McNamara get concussed on the play on the personal foul? Then why was he playing? And what led to the pick six? Was he concussed on the pick six? Now he got hit from behind on that play, but the camera angle kind of cut away. Didn't get a great look of if he was hit hard, where he was hit. He still had an angle to go over and try to make a tackle on the pick six and didn't take a very good angle at that. But we'll see. That's kind of where we are in it's a holding pattern. And even if he's, say, out this week, if it is in concussion, he's out for a week and they hope to have him back. Is Kirk Ferentz willing to rip the Band-Aid off and go full-time with Brendan Sullivan? If he was forced to do it, well, it's an easy decision on Saturday. If that's not the case, uh, we're going to have a whole lot more to talk about here on Locked On Hawkeyes. Well, that wasn't it. Over the weekend, Friday night, we also got our first look at the Iowa men's basketball team. We'll talk about that a little bit. Some Iowa hoops talk as Iowa gets the win in their exhibition game against Minnesota Duluth. Still a win's a win, and I think we got a little ammunition on top, about, on top of it. We'll talk about that as we continue. This is Locked On Hawkeyes. Well, we're always looking for tickets, and not just sports tickets. Game Time has you covered with all kinds of tickets. They can get you incredible deals, great seats on so many different events, concerts, shows, and, of course, sports. Game Time also has a new feature called Game Time Picks. Makes getting tickets to your favorite, watch your TV, favorite teams play even easier. It filters out the fluff with Game Time Picks. Shows you only incredible deals on great seats, so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of different tickets. Game time picks. This curation is absolutely incredible. And not just for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and a whole lot more. My favorite part of the game time app, the all-in pricing. I want to know exactly what that ticket's going to cost, and you can do it. Toggling the feature of all-in pricing shows you the total up front. No more surprise fees at checkout. Or all of a sudden, that ticket you thought you are getting at a good deal uh, looks a whole lot different. Plus, you can get views from your seat in the app before you buy with a panoramic view all in the Game Time app. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time Picks. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and make sure you use the code. It's Locked On College. That's going to get you $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College, L O C K E D O N. C-O-L-L-E-G-E -E for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Trent kind of back with you one final time on the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Lockdown Hawkeyes your first listen every day. So though it's not an official win, it is a win for the Iowa men's basketball team as they get the victory against Minnesota Duluth 102-81. Uh, there were some tense moments. I wouldn't overreact to that. There's a Minnesota Duluth team that wins a lot of basketball games at, at their level. But um, a couple of interesting components to this. First, in an exhibition game, you anticipate you're going to see a whole lot more. You're going to see guys getting more minutes than they normally would in the course of the game. And, and maybe because you're bringing in two new starters 
and the bench is basically completely new. Maybe because of that, Frey McCaffrey just wanted to see kind of what that A number one rotation was going to look like, what it was going to be. But what do you go through? Peyton Sanford played 33 minutes in the game. 31 minutes for Josh Dix. 27 for Brock Harding. 26 for Owen Freeman. 21 for Lajay Dembali. That was your starting five. And those guys played a majority of the minutes. Sado Triori uh, continued to be intrigued by his upside. Not as tall as I thought he was going to be. Now kind of seeing him out there on the hardwood. But he's got some bounce to him. He's got some skill. Got a decent looking shot. And, uh, you know, if he can knock down some shots for this team, along with that athleticism, that's going to go a long way. Speaking of a great looking shot, that's Cooper Koch. Now he's just one of five from the floor, one of three from the three point line. He just looked like he belonged out there and had the game on on Friday night. I was calling high school football. It was on. Wasn't able to see a ton of hit. Got back, though, Friday night after the World Series ended and watched the game again. And that was one thing. I think there's a role for Cooper Koch. Now, I do wonder if maybe his best role, at least the way that this team is constructed, is at the power forward position. And they got a glut of players at the power forward position. It is just a spot that the way the roster is built, they got a ton of those guys. And kind of the unfortunate part, normally you take a couple of those power forwards, you can go small, play one of them at the five, and go that direction. There just doesn't appear to be any of those guys that look right now that they can do it. And that's going to certainly put the pressure on Owen Freeman to stay out of foul trouble. I mean, that was a huge bugaboo for him a season ago was the foul trouble that we saw out of him. And they just can't afford it I mean, with the way they're built. Evan Bronze, he came in. He was the backup center for them. Uh, he ended up playing nine minutes in the in the basketball game. So he was out there a bunch. I don't know if you want him out there nine minutes a game, maybe six, four minutes in the first half, couple minutes in the second half, something like that. I think that's more the range you're shooting for. He's got some athleticism to him. He's got some bounce. And, uh, all these five fouls, right? Go in there, play physical. That's what you want to see out of him. I was surprised by Price Sanford, um, a guy that I wondered where he was going to fit in this team and the way that they're built. Looks like he's much stronger than he was a year ago. Doesn't look nearly as lost as he did a year ago defensively. Um, he's going to be one. And maybe the dis most disappointing aspect of this, and again, it's an exhibition game, was the point guard position. Brock Harding didn't play well for his standards. Just one of seven shooting, 0 of three from downtown. Look, he has to show an ability to shoot it from the outside. He's quick. He's good with the ball in his hands. But if teams are able to sag off him a ton, not only is that going to make it more difficult for him to get into the paint and do the things that he is very good at, it's also going to take off the passing angles that he has and that he needs. So he has to show the ability to shoot the basketball from the outside if he's going to be the point guard that Iowa needs. Uh, he finished the game with just a couple of points in there. Also. Three turnovers in the game, though he did have six assists. But uh, the other point guard, Drew Thelwell, that was a surprise. Just nine minutes in the game. He goes one to two from the floor, uh, made a bucket, knocked down his free throws in the game. But he also uh, turned it over three times. I was a team, turned it over just 12 times. That's good. And that's what we anticipate. But your point guards turned it over six times. Something to keep an eye on. I love the aggressiveness of Lajay Dembali. I wish. Josh Dix had that same aggressiveness all the time because he is such a skilled offensive guy. He got going in the second half, and he could just, when he gets just that that tick of confidence, and that's all he needs, and that aggressiveness that comes along with it, boy, he's a special player, and a special offensive player. Love what Josh Dix can be, and they're going to need him to step up in a big-time way this season. I've said it all year, all offseason. I believe that this is going to be a very good Iowa basketball team. Are they going to be good enough to compete for a regular season championship? I don't think so. But are they going to be good enough to compete in the top half of the league? Absolutely. An 18-team league, yeah, they're going to be there. I, it would take injuries, I believe, for that not to happen. With the increased athleticism, some better rebounders in the team, I think that's going to go a long way also for this team being just a smidge better on the defensive end and rebounding Couple with, you know, they're going to be able to score. They're going to put up points because that's what Fran McCaffrey teams are going to do. We'll get another look at uh, the squad coming up. Excited to see them as it'll start for real coming up here on Monday, November 4th. A week from today, we'll get our first real look. Now it's against Texas A&M, Commerce, then Southern, okay, South Dakota after that, the Coyotes come to town. 
And then I guess the first real opponent, if you will, over the Quad Cities against Washington State. That's Friday, November 15th. So we're getting into that time. We got the crossover. We got women's basketball getting started, wrestling right around the corner. Great time and a busy time, no doubt about it. We got you covered from every angle here on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast, your team every day, and not just Locked On Hawkeyes. We got you covered with all your favorite teams, you name it, NFL, MLB, whatever your flavor is, NBA, NHL, we got you there. But don't forget, also, for your second listen, make sure to check out the Locked On Big Ten podcast. Craig Sheeman puts the Big Ten first, and he does a great job of it, talking everything happening across the landscape of the Big Ten. You can find Locked On Big Ten on YouTube and wherever you listen to podcasts. Busy week for you coming up this week. We'll be talking with Scott Dockerman from The Athletic. Got that coming up for you tomorrow. Also going to have the press conference from Kirk Ferentz. We will get that to you and uh, some news and notes coming out of that one. Going to be an interesting one to see how this all plays out with Cade McNamara and Brendan Sullivan at the quarterback position. Basketball and a whole lot more here on Locked On Hawkeyes. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Go Hawks.